Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we are doing a SSD upgrade on my own personal system. So as you can see from the thumbnail and from the title of this video, we're going to be doing an upgrade using a drive that Silicon Power sent over. This is their one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD drive called the XS70. It has a rated read speed at 7.3 gigabytes per second and the write's about 6.8 gigabytes per second. So an extremely fast drive Drive that's also capable of being used with your PS5 if you have one of those and you want to uh, give you know your PS5 a bit of an upgrade but we're going to be upgrading the PC my own personal system which is just there in the background behind me and I'm going to take you through the process and show you the benchmarks and the results of this drive as well so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to chuck it a like get subscribed and a big thank you to Silicon Power for sending this drive over so let's begin Alrighty, so as you can see, we're now looking at the inside of my PC and currently the SSD drive that I'm using is actually under this heatsink right here. So the drive that I'm using at the moment is a Crucial P5 Plus. This is a Gen 4 drive in a Gen 4 slot. So we need to obviously turn off the computer. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So now it's shutting down. And then what we'll do is we'll grab our LTT screwdriver, which I recently got, which I am very, very excited about. We'll basically remove this heatsink and then take the drive out and put in the Silicon Power XS70. All right, so we can see now the system is off. I'll go ahead and switch off the power at the back as well. We'll go ahead and use our screwdriver to remove that heatsink. Shouldn't take you more, honestly, as long as you've got the right screwdriver and you've prepped your area um, you know shouldn't take you really more than a couple minutes to do this upgrade if you've had any sort of experience doing any you know upgrades in your own personal system or if you've built your own PC it is a pretty straightforward process so that heatsink comes off so that was the one that was being used to cover the drive that I currently have because it doesn't have a um, heatsink on it and then there's just one more screw that we need to take off and by the way, I really do like how this screwdriver has such a strong magnet for holding on to these screws. So I think that's pretty much, yeah, I might just need to use my fingers for this last part. Pull out the drive, and that's the drive that we were using. So the Crucial, see if we can get it in focus for a second. There we go, Crucial P5 Plus. Honestly, a really good drive, but I think this one from Silicon Power will be even faster. Alrighty, so we've got our XS70 here, and as you can see, there is actually a heatsink already pre-installed, pre-applied on this drive, which I think is actually a plus in my opinion, because if you are going to put it in something like a PS5, which doesn't have a heatsink on it um, for the SSD, then this is a big plus. Normally on a PC with a, you know, a motherboard like the one that we have here from ASUS, you know, most motherboards now will have some sort of heatsink going across the drive um, to keep it nice and cool because the really fast drives can get a little bit toasty, but this one already comes pre-applied. So I actually kind of dig it to be honest with you. I actually think it looks pretty nice. A little bit nicer than the one that ASUS has um, there for you on the motherboard. And that way through the window, you can actually already, um, sorry, not already, you can always see the drive. So putting it in is pretty simple. You just find that, um, that keyed slot, it just goes in like so, and then you push it down and it will basically be a bit of a two hand job here. So we'll get our screwdriver. Again, love these magnets and how good they are to keep the screws in place and then we'll just put it into the hole go ahead now and take your hand off the SSD and just basically tighten it in and that is pretty much it you don't need to go more than finger tight and that's pretty much it the SSD is installed so now we'll get it installed with Windows put all of our applications on and we'll start running some benchmarks now, one thing I did want to show you guys quickly was the process that I used to actually get everything from my C drive from the old Crucial SSD to the new XS70. So this program is called Macrium Reflect. You can download it for free off their website. And all you have to do is choose the clone function 
select the C drive, choose the destination drive, which is the XS70. In this case, make sure the partition length is matched to your old C drive. And because this is two one terabyte drives, they are. Go ahead and basically click next, 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 next. Get to the finish. It'll ask you to confirm um, to make sure that you want to I guess, erase the drive, which we obviously do, um, and then let the process go through. Now, the magic of video editing, you can see it here sped up. It only takes about a minute, but in real life, it took about 20, 25 minutes. And considering we copied about 900 gigabytes of data, um, it really does save a lot of time because now we don't have to install any of our programs. We don't have to reactivate Windows. We've got all of our configuration the exact same. All of our games are there. It is just a really, really cool piece of software that I've used a lot when I'm actually moving from one SSD to another. So really cool program. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description if you guys want to go and check it out. Okay, so what you can currently see on the screen at the moment are the screenshots that I took after running all of the same benchmarks on the P5 Plus and the XS70. Now, for context as well, my CPU is a 5900X CPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM installed, DDR4 of course, and the motherboard is a B550 a Strix gaming motherboard and the SSDs are obviously installed in a uh, Gen 4 PCIe M.2 slot. So now that that's out of the way, you can see here we've got the P5 Plus, the sequential read and writes in Crystal Disk Mark compared to the XS70 on the left. So the XS70 hit 7348 on the read, only 5755 though on the right, so falling well short of that 6.8 gigabyte write speed that they're advertising on the package. But that might be because the drive is about 90% used and there's only about 100 gigabytes left out of the one terabyte capacity. Not sure if that's actually the reason, but that's just my theory or maybe right why the write speeds are a little bit worse off, but still performing better than the Crucial P5 Plus. Going down now to Atto Disk Benchmark, you can see here that again, the uh, XS70 does perform better than the P5 Plus, pretty much across the range of tests that we ran with Atto. And then temperatures. So the hottest that we got on the uh, on the XS70 was 75 degrees Celsius and then 58 degrees compared on the P5 Plus. So I wonder if the actual heatsink on that uh, XS70 drive isn't actually performing as well as the one that might be coming on the motherboard. So, you know, you could fiddle with it and you could pull the heatsink off and give it a try without it and use one that comes on your motherboard instead. But I mean, these drives are going to get a little bit toasty when you're pushing them as hard as I am running these benchmarks. And to be honest with you, I'm not even really that concerned with the temperatures. I think that's perfectly fine, especially when you're doing short bursty sort of workloads. Um, now, 3D Mark, which is a really cool test I've got a storage benchmark that you can run um, to give you basically a score for how well it will do compared to a lot of other users that are out there um, for whether or not this drive will be suitable for basically gaming and launching big games, saving stuff, loading textures, recording, all that kind of stuff. So the average is 2104 and we got 3398. Now, anything over 3000 is pretty good. The P5 Plus got 3050. So, you know, to go an extra 100 points or 200 points might not seem like a big deal, but in this test, um, to go from 3050 to 3400 basically is a really, really big jump. And the actual bandwidth that this drive has is really showing um, with this particular test. So I think that the... Um, Silicon power drive is definitely going to be staying in my system for the future um, as it's just a much faster drive than what I've had before from Crucial. So now let's talk about price. So I'll just minimize these benchmarks for a second and we'll open up Google Chrome. And you can see here the Crucial P5 Plus, which is a slower drive, is priced at about $165, which I think is a pretty fair price. Now the XS70 for that extra performance, they've got it retailed at $189 at a shop here in Sydney, Australia, where I am. $189 is actually a pretty good price when you consider what sort of read and write performance you're gonna get on this drive. And if you compare it to some other more expensive drives, like one drive that comes in to mind is the MP600, which is gonna get you probably on par performance for a little bit more money. And then there's also the 980 Pro, which has a slower write speed but basically the same read speed for an extra 20 or 30 dollars so i think maybe before considering um you know one of those bigger brands or one of those brands that you may have may have heard of someone's told you about i really do think you should maybe consider 
giving the XS70 a go if you do want a really, really fast drive for your PC or for your PS5. Now, if you jump over to Tom's Hardware as well, which is a really good website, really good um, tech blog, tech website for reviews and that kind of stuff, they actually have here a lot of more in-depth technical information. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link to that down below as well. But the total endurance or total bytes written for the drive is 700 terabytes for the one terabyte capacity, which has a five-year warranty as well. So if you have any issues at all, you're going to be pretty much covered. And they really nicely sum up this drive as well. So the pros, competitive pricing, good all-round performance, attractive heatsink design, good caching design with consistent performance because that's really important, and PS5 compatibility. Cons, heatsink is form over function. So maybe they were getting some hotter temperatures than they were expecting as well. Um, so take that into consideration for this drive if you're deciding to pick it up. But basically they say here, silicon power, XS70 review, fast, attractive, and affordable. So I don't think it really gets much better than that. If there is, um, if you do want to download the software from Silicon Power to monitor the health of the drive as well, you can do that from their website. You can download the SP Toolbox, which is a really cool program just for monitoring the health um, and running diagnostics if you need to do that. But overall, I think Silicon Power has put together a really good product with a good price point. Now, personally, I'll be leaving this SSD in my own personal PC until something faster comes along the desk here. Um, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to chuck it a like, get subscribed. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. All my socials are down in the video description as well. So if you want to come and follow me on Instagram or join my Discord, you can do that. But um, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.